Yo, what's going on guys? And welcome back to another installment of the Program Explained series. Now for this video, if you couldn't already tell by the video title, we are going to be covering the first leg day of the program week. Now, since we only hit leg days twice on this program each week, every leg day will be a bit longer than the upper days since we want to accumulate enough volume to hopefully maximize hypertrophy. However, if your main goal is building strength for powerlifting, I will be including brackets on the screen detailing which exercises are optional for your goal if you so choose to skip them in order to reduce reduce weekly fatigue, and potentially maximize strength gains for your main compound movements. Also, of course, since there's going to be quite a few exercises, I'll probably be going through the coaching cues as quickly as possible as to not waste your time. So make sure to pay attention to the screen in case I add a few tips that I don't speak on. So jumping right into the first exercise, we of course have the barbell back squat. Given that the barbell back squat is a compound movement, which are again, a great tool for gauging fatigue. They are also typically quite conducive to steady progressive overload as well as they load lots of muscles at once. And of course, we want to build strength for the three main compound movements, given that this program has both powerlifting and bodybuilding goals. Now, when it comes to squat form, it can actually differ quite greatly between each trainee, depending on their leverages. So I typically recommend first trying out different variations and then choosing the most comfortable stance that you feel produces the greatest force for you. This means that you can choose a wide or narrow stance, as well as you can point your toes wherever you feel works best for you. Then of course, before initiating, the lift, you will want to brace your core by breathing into and pushing out at your gut. You also, of course, very generally want to try and keep a neutral spine throughout the entire lift in order to reduce injury risk. Then initiate the eccentric by either performing approximately 70% of the eccentric at a very slow and controlled pace with the last approximately 30% being faster yet still controlled in order to potentially yield a good bounce out of the hole. Or you can just do the entire eccentric at that slow and controlled pace in order to fully eliminate any possible miss grooves and injury risks. Lastly, if you're prone to knee valgus or knee caving, I'd recommend actively thinking of pushing your knees outward in order to line them up with, but not exceed further than the direction your toes are pointing in. So those are the best general cues that typically help my clients. However, again, this squat is very specific to your leverages and you might lift more without these cues or with very different cues. So I typically recommend experimenting with whichever squat cues you feel best for your individual goals and then sticking to that form for the rest of the program. So now moving on to exercise two, we have the straight leg deadlift. Now, the reason I chose this exercise is again, because performing compounds that are exact one-to-one -one or close to an exact one-to-one -one movement of the exercise you want to progress in are typically going to yield the best strength progression since strength is very specific. Not only that, this specific exercise is very good for loading the hamstrings in the stretch position and is great for hamstring and glute hypertrophy. Now with this movement, you want to generally maintain a neutral spine throughout the entire movement and again brace your core just like in the squat. After that you very generally want to initiate the movement by bringing your hips back and up until you feel a deep but not overly painful stretch in your hamstrings. Now again this movement is very individual and some trainees may be able to bring the barbell all the way down to the ground before feeling that stretch whereas other trainees have a shorter active ROM that only allows them to go down before reaching the ground so don't be discouraged if you can't quite reach the ground yet. Now, now, I generally recommend holding your position in the hole for one to two seconds to really get a good stretch before initiating the explosive concentric and repeating the next rep again with that slow and controlled eccentric. Now, moving on to the third exercise, I programmed a Bulgarian split squat. However, I'd like to mention if you feel this many compounds are too systematically fatiguing and might detriment your performance, you can instead do a leg press and some variation of glute abduction to keep the quad and glute volume that the split squat would have provided. However, However, I'd also like to say if your main goal is powerlifting and you choose to remove all the future optional exercises in this video, I'd highly, highly, highly recommend doing the split squat as you will likely be able to afford the fatigue caused by the compound movements. And since it's a variation of squats, it will be more likely to translate to a greater increase in strength for your barbell back squat than the leg press. So now for the cues, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just do a squat with one leg elevated behind you. I also typically recommend a medium stride length and I'd recommend testing between leg placements given that certain trainees feel a better glute contraction with their front leg adducted in towards their midline more and some other trainees feeling it better with their front leg abducted further from their midline. So 
Moving on to your fourth exercise, I program pretty much any straight leg calf raise. Personally, I do straight leg leg press calf raise since I really hate doing axially loaded calf raises since it might detract from the actual calves during the movement like a standing barbell variation. And this variation is really the only non-back dependent straight leg calf raise that my gym has. So that's why I usually always do them. Also, for really all calf raises, I'd follow a tempo of one to two second hold in the stretch position followed by explosive concentric where I typically recommend pushing up up with your calves as usual, however also thinking of pulling backwards with your toes as this cue seems to really help my clients with feeling a solid contraction. Now, of course, speaking of the contracted position, I also recommend holding this position for one to two seconds before performing a slow and controlled descent. And with that, we're moving on to the fifth exercise, which is a standing cable glute abduction, since lots of trainees are usually lacking the development of their upper glute shelf, which increases the overall glute aesthetic. Now, the cues for this movement are pretty simple. You generally just want to pull in the same or very similar direction to the glute medius's line of pull. However, with some trainees, you may feel it more by playing around a bit with the cables line of pull in relation to your body. Now, the literature also seems to show that pointing your toes in leads to greater EMG. However, I wouldn't put too much weight into EMG data, and again, I simply recommend using whichever feels best for you. Not only that, I'd also recommend starting with your leg adducted in closer to your midline or even past your midline to hopefully stretch the glute medius under load since this may yield greater hypertrophy outcomes. So, moving on to the sixth exercise, we have a lying leg curl since we already hit the hamstrings proximally under a very good stretch with the straight leg barbell deadlift. So now, of course, we want to focus on the distal hamstrings. With this movement, I recommend you adjust the machine to a placement that you can feel a small stretch before initiating the concentric. I also of course recommend the regular explosive concentric with a slow and controlled eccentric and I typically recommend pointing your toes upward since this may allow for the use of a greater load. Which leads me on to our seventh exercise, which is a seated calf raise since we already hit calves in a straight leg position. Now for this exercise cues, it's of course the same general cues as the straight leg calf raise. So in order to not waste any time and keep things simple, I won't spend any time here explaining more. Which of course leads us on to our last exercise, which is a hanging leg raise or any ab movement where you bring your legs upward towards your torso to hopefully bias the lower ab region. Now, as I've mentioned before, my cues for any ab movement are really just to round your hips or or bend your back forward in order to get a good contraction at the abs since that's one of their main functions and it will shorten the abs more which will of course hopefully lead to a stronger contraction and with all that in mind i'd like to thank you guys so much for watching the video this far and of course if you liked the video don't forget to leave a like comment if you have any questions or feedback as well as subscribe if you'd like to see more practical fitness content like this also if you guys found the information in this video useful don't forget to share it with someone else who might also find it useful as this greatly helps the growth of my channel as well as it spreads good fitness information out there to others. Lastly, if you'd like an already made program with all intro weeks, accumulation weeks, deloads, tapers, and max testing already done for you, as well as a complete guide to pretty much anything you'd want to know about training, my hyper strength program is currently on sale in a bundle with my winter bulking blueprint link in the description. And with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be seeing you guys next time. Peace.